want to hear what we think about this act, then check out the recap room. Link is in the description. Murmuration! Howie! Wow! Everything, oh. That is perfection. I felt, I love the music, I love the imagery, I love the uniqueness. They did so many wonderful things with their hands and arms and music and body. America, we're asking you to do one thing with your hands. Vote. They have to be in the finals. Vote for murmuration. Thank you so much. Simon. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. This was in a different league to anything we've seen. Yeah. So, honestly. And I, I, I know we all have different tastes. You know, we all like different things. But honestly, I think everybody watching at home is just going to be thinking what I'm thinking or we're thinking. And about, how about that is... message, Simon? The message. It was beautiful. Everything about it. It was perfection. Yes. Literally perfection. <laughs> Sophia! The whole thing was breathtaking. This is what AGT is all about. This is something that, I mean, was making all of us like excited, getting goosebumps. It's like spectacular. It shows the work, it shows the love that you guys have. <laughs> this is gonna be a special night for you guys for sure. Oh my gosh. Heidi, did you enjoy that? I did. You brought the music to life. You gave it a heartbeat. Like I felt everyone's heartbeat. It was incredible. Not one of you was out of line. You were so in sync. It was absolutely magical, and you just kept on surprising us with more beautiful things. I have to say, I didn't give you enough credit the last time. I See? mean, you all Told are you. amazing. Told you. And you are amazing. Told you.
love how you all got your spandex out. I love the long hair. You sound amazing, especially that high note. And everyone was roaring. Well done. Sophia, did you rock out? I'm super excited for you guys. I think America is going to love you, and you do deserve to be the biggest. Simon. <laughs> well, I didn't like it. I loved it. He loved it. He loved it. I love you. It's like you take yourself seriously because you've done this for a long time and it shows, but you don't take yourself seriously, which is what I like. They're like Kiss. You know, they're yes. just, you are. But for me, I'm going to say this. I know we're early on in the season. This has been my favorite live show act so far. Yeah. 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 Howie! Yeah, I agree with everything that everybody has said here. I love heavy metal. You guys are performers. You're the 10th act we've seen tonight. Only two can go through. It's up to America, but in my books, you guys are top 10. I agree. Yeah. Now, Steel Panther, we know what kind of music you hate, but is there any other kind of music you like other than heavy metal? I like classic jazz on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Me too! People often think my disability defines my existence. They say something like, oh, you have cerebral palsy. I know another guy with cerebral palsy. You should be best friends. <laughs> but they don't like it when I go up and say, oh, you're an idiot. Know someone else who's an idiot. You should be best friends. <laughs> and you don't get that with any other medical conditions either. I've never heard someone say, oh, you have herpes. <laughs> My brother has herpes. You should be best friends. <laughs> I have cerebral palsy. CP does not affect intelligence or hearing. In fact, the most interesting symptom of cerebral palsy is how it makes other people freaking stupid. <laughs> For example, people come up to me and start gesturing at me yelling real slow like, hello, can I pet your doggy? And I'm like, oh my, are you okay? Are you having a stroke? Do you need me to call 911? <laughs> oh, you're just an idiot. I guess we don't need an ambulance for that. People always ask why I need a service dog. I don't. You got me, I'm faking it. <laughs> he has two primary services. First, he gets my beer for me. Good boy. Now number two, fetch me a girlfriend. <laughs> You're ruining my set, you jerk. <laughs> Go fetch Sophia Viagra. I'm here. I'm single. Oh no. Damn autocorrect. I meant Sophia Vergara. We're almost done, but remember, if you don't vote for me, he won't eat tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, he'll eat tonight. He's the one that makes us dinner. <laughs> okay, make funny jokes, check. Hit on Sophia, check. Brought dog out for bonus votes, check. Perfect, that's my time. Love you all. become a comedian and it's beautiful to see you up there being so happy and making all of us laugh. Thank you so much for being here. Sophia. Well, I think this 
I love the way you look at life. I love that that's what makes you so funny, that you make fun of yourself, that you are like so like happy with yourself. And um, has anyone ever called you Sophia? No, they have called me like that before, Viagra? but I'm single. <laughs> Simon! Well, um, <laughs> you are naturally funny. I mean, just that. I mean, if you're a comedian, that's what it's all about. And um, interestingly, unlike other acts tonight, I actually wanted it to go on longer. Um, and you know one of my favorite bits was when the dog, even the dog's face when he was looking at you, <laughs> even the dog's funny. <laughs> He was just giving you this look like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was good. Bravo! Howie, you are on your feet, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm on my feet because I love this guy. I agree with Sophia. If anybody deserves to go on and voted for one of the two, it is you. Your timing is great. Your personality is great. And I've been a fan of yours since you were first here. I love when you work dirty. We can't see it here, but you're brilliant. Now, Aaron, why should America vote for you? Well, I'm competing with 65 hand dancers and a rock band, and I'm equipped with nothing but a phone and a thumb.
dancing. Are you okay? Are you okay? All right, all right, Simon. Are you sure? Why? Um, I, don't, oh, I don't know. He doesn't. Uh, are you all right, sir? He needs a minute. You are need you, a medic. I bet he does. Okay, okay. You need okay, a drink. Okay. You, need a drink. Okay. you, need you a hurt drink. yourself. Simon, what have you got? You hurt yourself. You have. Okay, I'll make this quick. Yeah, better. That was disgusting, <laughs> but brilliantly disgusting, and I think one of my favorite acts tonight. Yes. Yeah. And Thank you. you deserve to be here. I love acts like this. Um, and we're going to talk about this act. And you've really hurt yourself, and I'm sorry, so we yeah. should speed this up. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell Go you ahead, something, Alan. usually when you have an assistant, they're there to make it easier. She's not helping you. <laughs> and, and she makes carry-on horrible. And it was smiling. And the smiling and the taras, and you can't say you're okay when you can't get up right away. Heidi. I'm happy to see you smiling though. I have to say it is very exciting in a, in a very strange way because we don't see this very often. You know, there aren't many people that do what you do. So it is incredible what you do. And you have this amazing look about you too. You have a very, very distinctive look. Sophia. It was disturbing. <laughs> it was fascinating and I hate myself for liking you. Uh, can I say something? Um, you know, you say don't Try this at home. Don't you shouldn't anyone try, try this, this anywhere. No, no. Why do you do this? Do not try this anywhere. I don't do the most, but I do a lot. I'ma make a toast, cause we still alive. No big, I feel like pop. Shoot the shot. Them. They said they wanted to step it up. This is better. Not only better drumming, better showmanship, what you were doing with the wheelies and, and the drums, and the fact that we joined in made you so much better. We are very good. <laughs> Not enough acts to use us. It was golden buzzer worthy. What a way to start a show. We loved it. Thank you. Heidi. You are really, you put on a show for us. 
today. You utilize the space and you know, if I hope Beyonce or Taylor Swift or someone big like that is watching because they're doing these gigantic shows right now and you should be part of it. I see you up there on that stage too. Yeah, Sophia! Like how we said, this was the perfect energy to open the show tonight. Thank you. Again, the whole thing was perfect. I love the music. I love that we got to play with you. Badly. Good luck tonight. Yes. <laughs> Simon, you got, your, you got your drums here, man. Wow. You know what? Uh, first of all, the energy was just unbelievable. Um, I say this as a compliment. It was sort of brilliantly messy. And, it, and, and a kind of a group like this needs to be messy. But I always think with a group, it needs a great idea and it needs talented people. And what I just saw there is everything. It was a great idea. They're talented. And, and Heidi's right. I could see this. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I could see you with someone on the Super Bowl doing something like this. Seriously. Someone should just... Get on the phone and say, come and join me, because you're that good. I really mean that. Brilliant. Shioma and the Atlanta Drum Academy, first of all, you guys took it from here all the way to here. I could not be prouder to have made you my golden buzzer. You're incredible. And I got to say this. Now, you guys have worked very, very hard to take this to a How does this feel right now for you guys? Incredible! <laughs> I figured it out I figured it out from black and white Seconds and hours Maybe they had to take some time I know how it goes I know how it goes from wrong and right Silence and sound Did they ever hold each other tight? Like us, did they ever fight? Like us You and I We don't wanna be like them We can make it to Try like a Make it short and sweet. Five words. Best act of the night. Whoa. Wow. Any words from you, Heidi? I mean, you kind of, in a weird way, you remind me of Adele when you sing. Your voice is so large. It has such range. It has personality. I mean, you, it's so 
banging loud. Like I'm sure all of you in the back seats heard it. I mean, you are incredible. Sophia. Alfie, it's so impressive that a 12 year old can be so confident, sing so good. I mean, I really enjoyed it tonight. Your voice is spectacular. Spectacular. Not my favorite song, but your voice made it work. Now, Simon, Alfie wanted to impress you. What well, do you think? Alfie, it's not about impressing me. It's about, you know, it's about impressing everyone, obviously. But, you know, I, I have so much respect for you, 12 years old, to yes. come from the UK on this show. And you chose this iconic One Direction song. I'm going to tell you something, Alfie. I liked you on the audition. I loved you tonight. I don't think it was perfect. But there were moments, honestly, yeah. where I got goosebumps because I thought, you've really got something up. You've got a great personality. And people are going to like you. You've given yourself, I believe, a real shot of making it through to the finals. I really do. Only two going now, Alfie, you are an incredible talent. Who is your inspiration? My biggest inspiration is Harry Styles, Olivia Rodrigo, and Billie Eilish. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry, no. Above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion I was sore and never higher But I flew too high Though my eyes could see I still was a blind man Though my mind could think I still was a madman Just buzzed. I mean, no, me too. For me. See, they're booing you. They're booing you because they're not shy. No, I think they're no. booing you. Me. To me, you're like the Partridge family from the 70s, but right. modern. I hear all of your voices, and they are just mind blowingly, absolutely amazing. The song choice we can talk about, but that doesn't take away from your talent. Every single one of you is so talented. Thank you so you didn't find much. It so talented. You didn't think it was corny? Holly, Holly, explain you think, yourself right yeah, now. Exactly. Well, first of all, I thought, I, I gotta tell you. I think it was a song you No, it was. Like. Well, it could be, it was everything. I just watched the act before. Tonight, only two acts and are going so through. Amazing. I went from the Super Bowl to a cruise. Oh. It's not like a cruise ship. It felt a little bit corny. It felt outdated. You seem to agree with me. If you're going to, you shouldn't be singing rock and roll. Stay in your lane. Musical theater. But they are amazing. Howie, Howie, don't They're speak amazing. for Sophia now. You, you no, agree with him? Well, I felt like I was like in a church service. Oh. It, 
But I love that you guys are a family, and that's what makes me excited about you. I think people are going to love you because you're a family, and it seems like so much fun. It seems like what we need to have I've never heard you once say I'm excited to go to church. But but it's not my favorite rendition of the song, I have to say. Okay, Simon, here we go. You're very wholesome. Like I said before, very apple pie, cherry pie, peach pie, whatever. I think for me, the problem was, was the... I think it was a terrible song choice because I think you are, like how he was referring to, more like a kind of a musical theater, kind of like a Disney, something like that. There's nothing wrong with musical theater, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, but I I think, and and also some of the vocals were good, some weren't so good, and I think some, some of the facial expressions were over the top as well. Oh. Listen, first of all, Sharp Family Singers, AGT is all about family. Great. Tell me, what is it like performing with the people that you're closest to? It's a dream come true. We love each other so much. And we're always going to perform together. Family forever. You can try to break me. I cut my teeth on people like you It's gonna take long to take me down I'm step ahead, but we lay on the ground Don't need a night to cut the cake And count the dragons that I slay You can give it all you got the last time we saw you. I was rooting the whole time for you and I love that you're so persistent. You deserve tonight. Thank you so much. Simon, 
that was honestly, Terry, incredible. I mean, uh, if you hadn't seen, which we did, their audition, to say it was a disaster was an understatement, because it was. Yes. It kept going wrong again, again, and again. And yeah. as Howie said, other people honestly just would have given up, and you didn't. You eventually got there, and no! you came back tonight. And it's, that was as good as I've ever seen with this kind of act. I mean, that's like a 10. Yes. yes. Thank you so yeah. much. Howie, you know, we love Ukraine. America supports Ukraine, and there's a reason yeah, why. You people show us strength and, and uh, talent and beauty, and uh, you set the bar. I don't know if you played us. You set the bar on your audition, and you <laughs> fell, and then this was so much. You brought it together, and you conquered, and you raised the bar, and it, it's scary and wonderful and beautiful. Only two can go through. Good luck. Yeah. Heidi. I mean, when you are good, you're good. We have never seen this whole thing work all the way to the end. So I feel like a proud parent that this finally has worked out. I'm so happy for you. It was spectacular. Thank you so much. Bravo. Now, 3G. What did you do to prepare differently for these live shows, especially considering how your audition went? Even uh, with Fractured, we've been practicing every single day for many hours. Wow. Well, I can tell. It paid off. Say, when you're gonna get a job, and are you gonna go to college? You can't waste your whole life. Singing in some bar You need a steady boyfriend You own the town every evening And every Sunday morning We're wondering where you are well, Girl, what's up with you? Tell us the truth I'm like green grass clover High tide six days sober All I see in front of me is blue sky Stopping in my rear Nobody tells me what to do Not gonna hang around this one party town And wait to die Like you and you and you And that's the truth Sing to you, and you, and all of you. Some night, green grass and clover, high tide and six days sober. All I see in front of me is blue sky. I love that you stay true to yourself. I love that you have, you know, the nerve to come on, on a night like this that is so important with your own song. And I love it. I love country music, and I think your voice is perfect. Thank you so much, Sophia. Simon. Danny, I love you. I love your voice. I quite <laughs> I like you. the song. However, you know what? For me, I tell you what I didn't like. I felt you performed it a little bit like you were in a bar, we were sitting around eating, 
And I didn't feel you could have given us a moment right there with just you, a spotlight, maybe even just a cappella. But there was something about the performance which I just, it just went over my head, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. That's fair. No, thank you. <laughs> Howie, did you have a moment? You know, I love her, and I, and I think that now that we're in the lives and only two out of 11 are going through, so it's very important to raise the bar to do better. I liked your last song better. I'm just Thank saying, you. out of the choice, I've heard two things from you. Your audition, for me, was far better, and it's maybe because I didn't connect with this song, and that is the truth for me. Thank, thank you. Heidi. I think you're a great singer. You have a very unique, very distinct, distinctive voice. And I love the bangs. <laughs> Good you. luck to you. All right, Danny from Statesville, North Carolina, to performing in front of millions across America. How do you feel right now? I feel so thankful for this opportunity. I mostly feel thankful for Statesville and my local hometown for being the whole reason that I'm even here. <laughs> Hi, judges. The four of you have something in common. You're all parents. My dad is my best friend, and tonight I'm going to use my magic powers to show you that the bond between father and son is really magical. To do that, I need the help from my friends. My friends are going to throw beach balls into the audience. When they do, you bounce those balls all around the theatre. Simon, you're the boss, so you're in charge. When Simon says stop, if you've got a beach ball, hold on to it. You guys ready? Let's go! Go, 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 go! Bounce those balls all around the theatre. Go, go, go! Stop! If you've got a beach ball, stand up. If you've got a beach ball, stand up. Last night, I snuck into the theatre and put an envelope under everybody's seat. Could you all please take out your envelope, but don't open it yet. Now, if you ended up with a beach ball, stay standing and welcome collect your envelopes. Everyone else, hold on to yours for now. Whilst that's happening, let me tell you about something me and my dad always do. We have brick building competitions. I always win because I cheat and use magic. Let me show you how. Heidi, yes. here are some cards with my favourite Lego sets on them. As you can see, they're all different. Yeah, Could all different. Yeah. Could you please touch one, any one? Just touch. You sure? Yep. Don't let me see, but you can show everybody else. Thanks, Heidi. This box has been here the whole time. Inside it, there's some bricks. For the first time, Hardy, could you please name a set that you just picked? What was it? Come again. Save what was the car. set that you what just picked? What was on the card? <laughs> a helicopter. A helicopter. That's one of my favourites. Everyone shout helicopter as loud as they can on the count of three. One, two. Three! Helicopter! A helicopter! What? Now that's amazing! But what you're about to see is even better. If you still have your envelope, please take your picture out and hold it high. As you can see, they're all different and the buildings I have been to with my dad. Thanks, guys. You can put them down. My friends are going to join me on stage so we can look at the pictures that you chose, Simon. The pictures are more than just memories. They prove that the connection between us is more powerful than you could ever imagine. Remember, thousands of photos, nine balls bouncing all around the theatre, Simon, with the word stop, you selected these nine photos. I know it sounds crazy, but all of the pictures combine to show you all a snapshot of the connection between me and my dad. Watch this. Remember the real magic is in that special bond between every parent in the world.
old and their children, thank you and good night. Rylan and his dad, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> yeah, his father's excited. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm watching the whole thing around me to see if it was real magic, and it was. I mean, that was unbelievable. Seriously. I'm incredible. And how old are you? Ten. Unbelievable. Aww. Seriously, Howie. unbelievable. I'm, listen, it was amazing, and it, but nobody was more excited than your father. Why are you so surprised? Oh, he loves you. I love you too. He loves you. And maybe America loves you. And hopefully America votes for you. Heidi. You are like a little Harry Potter. And my favorite part is that you incorporated the love of your dad and made it part of your, of your magic. I also love how you say my name. Hoide. <laughs> Sophia. Ryland, you were so much more confident tonight than on the audition. That was spectacular, so much fun. It went like, it went super fast. It was like flowing. I think that you deserve to be here tonight because it looks like you've been practicing a lot. Good luck tonight. I hope that they vote Thank for you. you. Rylan, how does it feel to make your dad so proud tonight? It makes me feel incredible. Aww. Absolutely. Awesome. Pick up, pick up, get your hands in the air. It's a stick up, stick up. Shake it, tambourine, move it quicker, quicker. Yeah, I'm shaking down the town. Get the picture, picture. Uh, moving on the floor, gotta love that. How she keep it going on, gotta love that. To the beat like a pro, no, you love that. She can shake it to the floor, gotta love that. They call me Big Ellen. Big Ellen. I'm sorry, okay, look, if it had been a minute, I think I would have loved it. But then I was thinking after a couple of minutes, uh, this is actually terrible. Um, I, I do applaud you because I understand why you're popular on social media. Having said that, I've got to look at this from, will this act headline Vegas? And the answer I don't believe is yes, it's no. But think Heidi. about this, Simon. What if oh, she sorry, went on the road with the Sharp family? What? What if she went on the road with the Sharp family? She was the Sharp family's backup them. dancer. Anything could okay, happen. Okay, Heidi. I like Erica. I like Erica because Erica is not a professional dancer. She's a mom. 
she learned this all by herself. And also, I really feel like from the first audition to this today, you stepped it up. Thank you. Now, how you can step it up even further to make it a million dollar act. Yes. I feel like you're climbing the ladder slowly but surely, but sure. is it improved from last time? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Sophia, where are you? Erika, I think that no matter what happens tonight, <laughs> you already won. Thank you. I mean, you look how amazing. How do you figure that out? because she looked like she's having the best time of her life. And she has taken advantage of this opportunity. Look at all the followers she has. Now, I love you. I, I love think you you're too. great you. and good luck tonight. Now look, Simon himself says two minutes can change your life. It's more than one minute, you get two, so take them. I gotta say, what do you hope America takes away from your performance tonight? Uh, I hope they just take this moment as you know, seeing like maybe they could do something with their life that they never thought that they could do, never had the courage to do. <laughs> One of you is still in the competition. One of you is heading home. America has voted. The first act in this week's top five is... The second act, still in it, is... Alfie Andrew! Thank you so much, Sharp family. You are amazing, thank you, good luck. The next act, still in it, is... Competition is Murmuration. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Steel Panther. You've been amazing. Thank you and good luck. Wow, so much. Is in the top five. Five acts. But right now, two are going to be leaving the competition as we reveal your top three. The first act in the top three is. The top three is Gioma and the Atlanta Drum Academy. The third act in this week's top three is Murmuration. Wow. The first act going into the finals is. Second act, 
going into the finals is... wants me to lose weight, but she doesn't know how to tell me. She's in New York, she comes to LA. You know how you see your parents, you become a child again? I'm like, oh my God, mommy! She's like, Jacqueline, Lord of mercy, you're fat. <laughs> Jesus, you are fat. What are you eating, people? <laughs> I don't like weight loss TV shows. If you love that show, The Biggest Loser, you and I can't be friends. <laughs> You know how that show works? Get somebody who's overweight, you lock them on an island, and they have to work out eight hours a day, seven days a week, and oh yeah, we're gonna make you wear a small spandex bra, and baby panties, and wear you on a scale, and for cattle, on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you lose weight? Who's losing these contests? You want to impress me, get a bunch of fatties and lock them in a donut shop. <laughs> the first one to not go into a diabetic coma wins. That's the show <laughs> I would support. How did I get into this? How do I make noises? I don't know. I grew up making noises. I can't stop it, man. <laughs> when I was growing up, I lived next to an active runway. My father was in the Air Force. So that meant every few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. My mom wasn't prepared for that. Why is the six month old baby making noises? <laughs> now, later on in life, I learned that these sounds can get you in trouble. I'll give you an example. On an aircraft, this is what I did. Not allowed to do this. <laughs> Don't do that on a plane, man. If you go, they're gonna think it's real. I did that. This is Barbara Walters, and today on my show, I have award-winning actress, Natalie Portman. Natalie, I hear you're having a baby. I am Barbara. <laughs> We're thinking of naming the baby Oscar, but that's, that, that's silly because that's my cat's name, so. Hey y'all, it's Molly Cyrus, what's up? That's good, that's good. What, Dad? No, I'm not gonna clean my room right now. Want me to clean out your bank account? <laughs> 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 
You do jokes, I do impressions. I got it. I could do jokes. I'm sure you could. Could you do an impression? Yes, yes, I could do an impression. Go ahead, do it. What? Do it. <laughs> do it. All right. I will do an impression, yeah, and then you tell me who I'm doing. Okay. All right, let me think. King Kardashian. What? <laughs> you are tweeting without thinking. Donald Trump. It's a crapshoot. Crapshoot. <laughs> Come on! All right, now listen, I have an impression. Okay, I am not a professional. That's fine. All right, t tell me who this is. Ready? Yeah. Who's this? <clears throat> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Elton John. In what world do you live in, Rebecca? Where some 17-year-old dude is showing up to this house party like, y'all not gonna believe this. I got Pinot Grigio. <laughs> yeah, got that Grigio. <laughs> Let's do shots of Chardonnay. Let's start a book club. <laughs> yeah. It's never happened. Right? You don't know a 17-year-old that owns a corkscrew. That's weird, all right? Not one time in your entire life can you tell me a time where you've seen a 17-year-old dude be like, mm, 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 mm. This Merlot pairs so well with a Doritos Locos taco. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. It is just something about Zinfandels in a Hot Pocket that is to die for. <laughs> I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> and now look, I worked in the worst department at the grocery store, not the meat, not produce, not the freezer. I worked in the steel department. You familiar with the steel department, right? Self-checkout lane? I got paid to watch people steal all day. And people think you stupid. Like, you know when they're going to rob you when they're bringing up their stuff, they always got to look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. <laughs> this one dude tried to humiliate me. Like, I knew he was going to rob us because I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> but he, try, he tries to play me in front of the entire store while he's ringing his stuff up. He makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> He didn't even do it right. Like, you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch at least. He's like, Bleh. I like the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. You're beeping unbeepable stuff. When I got invited to come in America's Got Talent Champions, it was like all my dreams came true at once. I thought he was gonna be a singer. So I decided to do some research on the judges. Did you know that backstage there are five hairdressers, three makeup artists, a wardrobe department, and a whole team of nutritionists? <laughs> and that's just to maintain Simon's new look. Oh. Oh. Yes. Heidi, uh -oh. my mum told me that you are a victorian. Supermodel. <laughs> and she showed me one of your videos. But then Dad came home from work and we watched all your videos. <laughs> over and over again. I got a motorcycle. I don't like telling people I have a motorcycle because every time I tell someone, they always got to tell me a story about how their friends crashed on a motorcycle. You know, like, why do people have to be so negative? I don't go up to pregnant women telling them my dad left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. I walked at my apartment one time, right? I walked at my apartment, and my neighbor walked up to me. She was like, oh my God, you got a motorcycle? Are you starting Are you starting? You better be careful. I got in a car wreck the other day. My car flipped eight times. I'm looking to be laughed, blessed, right? 
Yeah. She black, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone around us was like, you know, that, was, that is crazy that your car flipped eight times, you're alive, you are blessed, you know? And I'm, I'm over here thinking, who the heck counted, right? Like, <laughs> who's that calm when their car's flipping in the air? Ah! One! Like, who's doing that? <laughs> My name is Preacher. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's it. I'm kind of clueless, you know, but it seems to me kids today are a little bit entitled. Am I right? Right? Okay. So my daughter turns 16 and she says, Mom, I want to go to Coachella and I want you to get me a hotel room. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm like, you're 16. Listen to yourself. A hotel room. <laughs> I mean, if you can't find a guy who can afford a van by now, I mean, really. <laughs> when I grew up, my mom and her friends, they partied 24-7. You know, they always, always brought flasks on field trips. Okay? Right? So, I go on my daughter's first field trip. I take my flask. Right, Howie? Right. I'm not going to get on a bus full of first graders sober. Not, not, not ever. Okay? <laughs> I take out my flask, you know, I have a little sip. And all the other field trip moms, they just go ballistic. They're like, she's got a flask, she's got a flask! You know, like I'm some kind of terrorist, right? I'm like, calm down, biatch. I'm not driving this bus. I can teach you how to do Ryan Reynolds, but first you have to do Jim Carrey's voice. And in order to do Jim Carrey, just imagine yourself as a giant Canadian bird, okay? Hi there, judges. Uh, I have some voices for you. <laughs> Take that Canadian bird down to a sexy whisper, and you have Ryan Reynolds. Hi there. I have some voices for you, judges. I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> that did sound like Ryan Reynolds. Okay, here's how to do Seth Rogen's voice. Yeah, take Santa Claus's laugh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Now imagine Santa Claus eats a different kind of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy job. I just slide down chimneys and I deliver packages to kids and eat their cookies. <laughs> now you can do that. I have a twin sister, and I actually don't talk a lot about being a twin because people ask really stupid twin questions. Like, whenever I say I have an identical twin without fail, someone will go, do you guys look alike? <laughs> we are very different personality-wise, me and my sister. I'm very silly and playful. My sister's very dark and sarcastic, and she has low self-esteem, which is weird, because she has my face. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what it's like when someone that looks exactly like you calls you up and goes, I feel so ugly. <laughs> that is our face. You know I'm not from California, but I look like I am. Just another wobbly guy on the sidewalk. <laughs> I made eight bucks walking over here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can you guys see this bracelet? Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, just making sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody always thinks that this is one of those copper magnetic healing bracelets. I'm like, hey, does that thing work? I'm like, oh yeah, man. I was in a wheelchair last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to put it on this arm next week. <laughs> I better take it off soon, though, you know? I don't want to get too better. <laughs> might mess up my show, and then I have to figure out how to be a magic singing ventriloquist or whatever. <laughs> Let's just say we're not getting a puppet on that thing. Oh, my God! I just got the citizenship. Yeah! Until I got my citizenship, I never had a road rage. If somebody cut me off, I'd be like, oh, so sorry. 
I was driving too slow. <laughs> but the day I got the citizenship, somebody cut me off. I'm like, what the heck? You can't cut me off. This is my land. <laughs> That's when I realized I become true American. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's hilarious. Because I felt entitled. <laughs> oh! Before the citizenship, somebody hold the door for me. I ran really fast. I'm like, thank you so much. After the citizenship, I'm like, yeah, you hold the door, you peasant. <laughs> I got sassy. <laughs> I love her. It was very hard on me growing up. He used to call me a huge waste. <laughs> you see, both of my parents wanted me to become a lawyer. Never even came close to becoming a lawyer, but I was once involved in a suit. <laughs> but I've since traveled the world. Went to Spain, fell madly in love with a Spanish sundress. And we broke up and I was pantalones. <laughs> yeah! I love him. But I'm happily married now. Aw. <laughs> My wife and I are Polly. It's polyester. <laughs> Our daughter Capri. <laughs> brought home a pair of sweatpants. Hey, I want to be a supportive father, but I want to see her date someone ironed with a crease. This guy looked like he'd been donated. <laughs> she asked if he could spend the night. I said, in my house, you'll sleep in separate drawers. <laughs> you know the problem when you go to a nursing home and you look like me? Yeah, they wouldn't let me out. <laughs> the only reason I'm here tonight is I had to get a night pass from the front desk. <laughs> The first thing I found out when I got old is that young people hate old people. Oh, is that right? No. 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 Really? Did you ever drive behind an old person? <laughs> yes. Does this look familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing I'm experiencing now at 80 is that my hearing has gotten awful. I'm talking to this woman the other day, and she tells me she has a peanut allergy. Right, I misheard the word. I said, what happens? She said, I start choking and gagging. I applied to work at the Cocoa Foundation when I was in college, uh, and they rejected me because I have hearing loss. Yes, boo, the Cocoa Foundation. Uh, they, told, they told me I was a liability issue because if the gorilla were to sneak up on me, I would not be able to hear it, which I can't say with any degree of certainty, uh, <laughs> but probably that seems true. Um, so you guys seem like a nice crowd full of hearing people, so I'm just going to toss this question out to the room. Um, what are y'all going to do different if a gorilla sneaks up on you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I would love to know. Um, that makes a lot of sense. DM me after the show. I'm just desperate to know what home field advantage y'all have uh, <laughs> with your two second head start. Ridiculous. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing you're going to do different than me is die scared. That's it. Um. Yo, this is a true story. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Tourette's camp. Yeah, that's where the joke should end. <laughs> it's a real place, and I didn't realize it till this moment, but I found out that when other people twitch, it makes me twitch more. So on the first day, they put us in a circle with a hundred kids. Oh, no. The kid next to me did a shoulder roll, and my Tourette saw that and took that as a challenge. And I threw him a head flop. The girl next to him did a full body twitch, and everybody saw that, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> So 
Some of my charts, I can't explain why they're true. I just know from experience, this is what's gonna happen. Here's the locker room at my gym. I am the blue dot, I walk in. I start to get changed. The minute I get all my clothes off, 12 guys walk in, and this is where their lockers are. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> It defies statistics. Sometimes statistics sound scary, but it's not when you look at it from a different angle. When I first got married, I heard 44% of marriages end in divorce. That's a scary number. Think about that. 40, my wife and I are like, do we stand a chance? Think of the other side. If 44% of marriages end in divorce, you know what that means? 56% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Till death do us part. <laughs> Those are the two ways that marriages end, folks. If, if you're married, enjoy it now. It does not end well. <laughs> Give it up for my dad. Gerald Kelly, the comedian. I love that dude. But he's a loser. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm seven years old, and we have the same job. <laughs> The other day, he was like, hey, yo, Hunter, are you going to work tonight? <laughs> if you going, I'm going. We have the same job. <laughs> My roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. We're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady. She's a snitch. <laughs> My mom would just show up. Where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, mom. You raised me. <laughs> Don't do this. I'm your son. Come on. I'm 34. I don't look 34. I, I don't look any age. I just look like I've been through stuff. <laughs> and 34 is a difficult age because I, it's not old, but it's old enough that the world's changed. Like, I, I'm old enough to remember time was you saw a fella with a neck tattoo. Well, then you thought, oh, I'm about to see a dead body. Now you see a fella with a neck tattoo. All you think is, oh, this latte is going to be amazing. <laughs> and, and, and you got to do things to stay young. I, I do things to stay young. I, I recently borrowed money from my parents. <laughs> For those of you who never borrowed money from your parents, the crew will know this, the celebrities will not. <laughs> you have to gather your parents together and go, hello, mother, father, you know how you're supposed to teach me responsibility? Well, you failed, and that comes with a hefty fine. <laughs> I just got broken up with, it was an open relationship, it means you can be with anybody you want. I didn't know this, apparently, the girl can also do that. <laughs> yeah, no, read the fine print. And my girl got the first person. I made the mistake of asking her this guy's name. She told me, you ever hear somebody's name and then know immediately that this person is a better lover than you? <laughs> I was like, what's his name? She's like, Alejandro. I'm like, no! <laughs> no! Alejandro! You, you, you couldn't be with uh, Eugene, you know? <laughs> or, or a Simon? You couldn't do a Simon. <laughs> You couldn't do assignment. You couldn't do assignment. <laughs> listen, listen, if you're not laughing right now, if you're not laughing right now, your name is Eugene, all right? Every Eugene here is like, actually, I've heard they're pretty vigorous, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I, I met this guy, and it was a relief because his name was Alejandro, but his voice was Eugene. <laughs> Straight up, he comes over, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I'm like, much better now. <laughs> As soon as my son touched my finger, I knew I would die for him. I don't even know this dude, but I would die for my son. The first time I see him, the first time I touch him, I would die for my son. Isn't that crazy we do that, fellas? Yeah. That's right.
Because we wouldn't do that for our wives. What? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling the heat from the women. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Ladies, hang on. Hang on. Look, ladies, the first time we see you or touch you is usually on the first date. No dude in this world is dying for you on the first date. Now, let me make you feel better about the situation. If you're on a first date and a dude looks at you and goes, I would die for you, you better run. Because that dude's about to kill you. But I would die for my wife now, 100%. It took a couple years, but we got there. That's right. If a car jumped the curb and was headed her way, I would push out of the way and take the hit myself. That's how much I love her. Because we've all dated people we wouldn't die for, right? That same car jumps the curb. You're like, shh, I guess it was their time. I guess it was their time. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm the type of guy, ladies, that will offer you my jacket. If it's cold outside, I will offer you my jacket. Uh, but I'm not the type of guy that uh, once you turn that down, then uh, you get cold later. <laughs> <laughs> Offers off the table. You, uh, you obviously make bad decisions, and uh, we shouldn't both suffer for that. I just found out that I might need glasses uh, for reading. So I had to make the hard decision, you know, to stop reading. Uh, I got colors and shapes down, I'm pretty good. I got silhouettes made out. I knew I was getting older, by the way, when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. <laughs> Remember how you watch Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it. You want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn. <laughs> Now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. 